Hi, folks. Um, thanks for joining us today. Quick one today. It's August. You're all at the beach, so nobody's actually listening. Um, I was doing a little bit of reading over the weekend. Um, uh, we partner, uh, we at PF partner in Europe very often uh, with a fabulous university uh, and its privacy academic center, um, University of Free Brussels, or VUB, which stands for something um, that I don't pronounce well, um, uh, that means University of Free Brussels, VUB. Anyway, um, phenomenal place, um, Paul de Hart, one of the leading privacy data protection academics in the world, uh, is there. Uh, Chris Kuhner, um, longtime privacy expert, professor, lawyer, uh, who leads the Brussels Privacy Hub. Uh, so we have for a number of years partnered with them on a Brussels Privacy Symposium, where we do a full day academic program with articles published in law journals. Uh, we've done it on de-identification. We've done it on um, artificial intelligence. Uh, this year, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're launching a year long training program in the policymakers and regulators of their staff. Um, that really does a deep dive into very specific areas of technology. Uh, lots of DPAs have hired many, many new staff, obviously on law and on uh, policy. They're all training and getting them up to speed. Um, can be a little tougher to get up to speed on how organizations, how companies, how researchers are actually using data, understanding those data flows. You often have to work at a company or attend lots of the more data and technology-oriented conferences, not just the privacy conferences that uh, many of us go to. Uh, so we are pulling together, since we do spend our time in the weeds on the nuts and bolts of technology, uh, we're pulling together a number of publications that try to really go deep, um, but are accessible to people who maybe don't have a machine learning background, uh, who don't have a statistics background, who aren't going to write code, but need to know enough uh, to assess and understand and be thoughtful about uh, their policies and practices. Uh, the first one will kick off uh, as a side event at the International Privacy Commissioners Conference uh, that is coming up, uh, and then we've got a host of others that can be uh, taken both virtually uh, or in person during the year. Okay, but the reason I mention this is um, I was at the VUB site, um, they're hosting the uh, registration for this event and I got distracted by some of the recent blog posts and was reading a post by uh, Paul DeHert, uh, uh, our, our friend, a leading uh, uh, really thinker and uh, active um, uh, player in uh, policy. Uh, and uh, he had uh, a post some months back about legitimate interest and I was reading it and I thought, this is really great. Um, people are confused about legitimate interest. When can it be used? How can it be used? There's a lot of history uh, and cases that many of the newer people who are learning about GDPR, who are GDPR experts, uh, but who don't have perhaps the benefit of the fact that many courts have actually dealt with the question of legitimate interest over the years. And we've got opinions to look at to, uh, to learn. Um, and as I read the article, I said, it sounds a little bit familiar. Maybe I read this before. And then I realized, of course I read it before. Paul wrote an article uh, for the Cambridge Handbook of Consumer Privacy by, well, Edwin by Evan Selinger, Omer Cheney, uh, Evan, a great uh, professor of philosophy at, uh, uh, in upstate New York um, uh, and uh, University of Rochester. Um, Omer Cheney, my frequent co-author, VP of Knowledge uh, Chief Knowledge Officer at the IEPP. Uh, we collected um, articles from a whole range of um, different experts around the world. And Paul's, uh, co-authored with Irene Kamara, another great academic, uh, is titled, Understanding the Balance Between Legitimate Interest of the Controller, a Pragmatic Approach. Uh, anyway, um, if you have end of your budget, great book for you to buy on Amazon, uh, and the link is there. It is expensive, more than 100 bucks, but it's a pretty solid handbook. Um, if you are an FPF um, advisory board member, come by the office, and I'll sign one for you, and give it to you. Um, the rest of you, buy it on Amazon. Um, if you are, however, really, really, really interested um, in legitimate trust, um, I have another special offer for you. 
for you, since you're a Facebook Live watcher, one of the people who cares enough to tune in when we um, uh, spout about data protection. So something a little bit special to be um, thankful to you. Uh, this past year, Gabriela Zanfer Fortuna, our EU policy uh, expert uh, here, um, uh, worked really hard um, with our pals at NIMI to research 30 plus cases um, on legitimate interest, looking at actions taken by data protection authorities, uh, court cases, uh, any evidence we could find that would be helpful. And she analyzed each case and she wrote up a short description of what was it about, what was the conclusion, what's the takeaway. Um, we have made this available via Nimity, if you're a customer of theirs. Uh, we um, made this available to all of our uh, members. We have a special EU group that tracks uh, and follows and deals with main EU issues. But for a short time today, uh, I'm posting the direct link to that report uh, in this uh, posting, uh, and you can go ahead and, uh, and download it. Isn't that exciting? Um, only today. After today, if you're watching this video, um, join the FBF because people like me, Gabriela, the 20 plus staff, we love what we do, what we eat, and we pay mortgages. And so we're more than happy to um, have donors and members who support uh, that activity. So contact me about joining. Uh, but right now, if you're watching this or any time today, uh, go to the um, link labeled legitimate interest, and you too can dive deep into the intricacies and intimacies. Um, that's it for today, just a quick one. Um, hopefully you are watching this from your phone at the beach. Um, watch your kids if they're in the water. Um, I'm just reading a study, uh, evidently in Germany, um, there's some research that has indicated that there's been an uptick in kids drowning at lakes and pools, um, and they've attributed it to parents being on their phones and not being as uh, scrupulous. Uh, I was in Bethany Beach, Delaware. That's, for those of you who know the DC area, kind of one of the closest beaches. It's three hours. Somebody grew up on the beach at, at Brighton Beach. That's what we did lots and lots of summers when I was a kid. Um, we didn't have much money. The beach was free, and it was down the block, and it was fun. Um, uh, uh, so I, I love the beach. So um, when I can make it, I, I do. Uh, so I was out in Bethany Beach, Delaware, and I took a walk one morning. Uh, and it was relaxing, and everybody who was sitting and relaxing was also looking at their phone on the beach. And frankly, I was as well when I um, sat down. Um, so maybe we all do need to figure out how to give a little bit of distance from those digital um, devices. In any event, if you're watching this on a digital device, um, please take a look at our legitimate interest report, um, snatch a copy, um, and uh, hope you enjoy that. Um, and one favor, if you download the report and you don't already get our newsletter, which would have told you that we have reports like this, um, go ahead and subscribe. We won't share your email. Um, we'll respect your fundamental rights. Um, there's a link to subscribe if you are not already. If you're a member, you get our special member newsletter. If you're a subscriber, you get a lot of useful information from us, including information about our upcoming events. Uh, so go ahead. Do me a favor, uh, subscribe so you hear more from us. Thanks much. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the summer.